Welcome back. In this session, we're going to take a look at LOD expressions. And I love them. I use them. And I probably overuse them. I hope at the end of this session, you feel comfortable using them and you incorporate them into your designs also. We're going to look at them first from a standpoint of how you create them. And then we're going to take a look at some use cases on where they're best used. Uh, first, let's talk about the syntax for an LOD expression. The syntax starts very simply with a keyword, and the keyword we're going to talk about today is fixed. And we're going to talk primarily about fixed LOD expressions. And that keyword is embodied in, uh, in I call them squiggly quotes, but uh, brackets, uh, if you will. Then that's followed by a series of dimensions. And uh, those dimensions are separated by a comma. When the dimension list is complete, there's a colon. And then there's ex an expression that aggregates the data. And here we're going to look at some sales. And I'm going to go into detail about what all this means. So just stay with me for a second. And then that's followed by a closed bracket. Now, if we were to say this in words, if we were to uh, read this sentence in words, we would say, Take all the combinations of region and segments. There's four regions and three segments. So we're going to have 12 data points here. Take all those combinations. And for each one of those uh, combinations, sum the sales and save them so that I can use it later. Well, let's take a look at what's actually happening here. And we're, we're going to use Superstore data. And Superstore data has about 10,000 records in it. So 10,000 records represent the line item detail on, um, on invoices, for example, when, uh, when something is sold. So the lowest level of data in your data set has, has 10,000 individual records. Now we can write LOD expressions to create layers at different layers in uh, different levels in that uh, data set. If we go up to the top, the top level is the sum of all of that data, all those 10,000 records. And for Superstore data, it's like $2.3 million of sales. But it's one single record. We know what it is, and we're going to apply it everywhere. But we'd like to have some layers in between that we can use for other purposes. We can go to the uh, expression I just, uh, just talked about, the fixed region segment. There's four regions, three segments, so there's 12 values. Sum the sales, so these 10,000 records get summed, get totaled into 12 records based on region and segment, that combination. And that forms a layer in your data set. We can go one level higher if you want. We can go to a uh, fixed region, and there's four regions. And we can sum the sales at four regions. So we've got four records at this level. And then at the highest level or the, or, or the uh, top of our pyramid, you could actually write an expression that said fixed sum of sales, and it's going to return one value. Or there's another expression that does the same, and this is known as a table LOD. And you'll see me use it. You'll see other people use it. Don't be confused by it. It's just the uh, opening squiggly bracket, sum sales, close squiggly bracket. And that's the sum of all the sales in the entire data set. And we're going to use it. We're going to use it with max. We're going to use it with some other uh, some other ways of aggregation. But essentially, every time you create an LOD, or a fixed LOD, you're creating another layer in your data set that you can use for some other purpose. Well, let's take a look at how this might look. If we, if we had this data, this is uh, Superstore data, and I've got region and segment. And I came into that data and I created the expressions that we just talked about. This expression is our region level sales. This is the one that we've talked about a couple of times now. It's gonna return 12 different data points. At each combination of region and segment, it's gonna to total the sales and it's gonna, uh, and they're gonna be fixed at that point. So we can take that and we can apply it to the data set. Okay, and you can see at this level, we got region and segment. So central region consumers, uh, 253,000, and that's the sum of sales. If we were to expand that, if we were to uh, go to the next higher level, the one that we talked about, we can take a look at that. Oops, wrong one, sorry. We can take a look at that, a fixed region sales. Now we're only gonna look at four pieces of data. We're gonna look at the sales at the region level. Okay, and now we've got 
503,691,000. Let's just drop this in. We're going to put in some totals so that you can see what those are. There's, there's the 503,000. And that's how it's, it's calculated. And it's fixed, so there's only four values. And we could go one more in the fixed overall value that we looked at. We're going to use this form, the fixed sum of sales. And we're going to drop that on the chart also. And doing that, you see it's the two hundred the $2.3 million worth of sales. If we total them all, it's $2.3 million. And just to show you where that comes from, I'm going to drop a total on all the columns. And you can see the total is $2.3 million in e each one of the columns. So what we've done by using uh, these uh, three uh, LOD expressions is we've created additional layers in our data set. And now we can go ahead and we can use those in different types of calculations. A couple things you've got to know about LOD expressions. One is that they aggregate the data, they take the data to a higher level. We saw how we took 10,000 records and we made it 12 records. We took 10,000 records and made, made it four records. So they're aggregating data and creating a different layer. But that layer and that LOD expression is not an aggregate in itself. So you can use that LOD expression in any other type of expression. Well, here's an example where we can use uh, an LOD expression to replace a table calculation. Now you might say, well, why do I want to why do I want to replace a table calculation? Uh, as you're going to learn in the next session when we talk about table calculations, table calculations are last in the order of operations, and they can't be used in other expressions. LOD expressions, on the other hand, are calculated much earlier in the order of operation. They can be used in any expression. So let's take a look at this. Um, let's take a look at this here, and what we're going to look at is uh, a very simple. Very simple, we're gonna take a look at the percent of total. And first I wanted to show you how we can do that with, an, uh, with a table calculation. And we're gonna go into this in the next session in detail, but I can open this up. I can create a quick table calculation in the percent of total. And when I do that, uh, Tableau immediately defaults that they calculate across the columns. We want it calculated by year, so we're gonna go down the table. And when I do that, I've got the percent of each subcategory as a percent of the total. And if I wanted to do this in a different a different way, I could create an LOD expression that did the same thing. And let's take a look at what this what this does because it uses the same expressions that we just uh, the same type of expressions we just looked at. This first expression is the numerator. And the numerator is uh, fixed by the year of order date and by the subcategory sum of sales. So all this is going to do is sum the sales at the order date, the year of the order date, and the subcategory. Well, I know there's 17 subcategories and there's four years that we're looking at. So that's uh, 68 data points. Okay. We can take a look at the denominator, and the denominator just takes a look at the sum of sales at each of the year of order date. So we fixed year of order date, sum of sales. So there's four values for that. Now I want to divide the total at the subcategory level by the total of the year. And to do that, you see I aggregate the numerator and I aggregate the denominator by sum. And I do that once again because the LOD expression itself is not an aggregate. And that comes, that's an advantage for us, and we can use it later. Now, if I apply that to this table, and let me just let me just put this this way. <clears throat> we can see that we're seeing the same value. This is the, the top chart, it's the table calculation. And the bottom chart is our LOD expression. And you can see it returns the same values. So we replaced a table calculation with an LOD expression. Well, there's a lot of other things that we can do with LOD expressions. Um, we can find the min or the max in the total data set, or in a partition of the data set, or in part of the data set. Or we can find the earliest and the latest, like the earliest date or the latest date. 
take a real quick look at how that might look. Let's take a look and find the uh, minimum, the minimum overall date. Oops, I'm sorry. The minimum overall date. And it looks something like this. And here I'm going to use that format that's the uh, the table LOD. And we're going to take a look at the entire table at once. I start with a open bracket, min, the earliest or the minimum order date would be the earliest order date, followed by a close bracket. And when I do that, I get the minimum order date is January 3rd, 2020. That's the, that's the, lowest or the first order date in the entire in the entire data set. Well we can take a look at, at using that to return other values. If I come in for example and I take the min order date and I set the order date to the minimum order date. It's going to return a true value. It's a it's a it's a, a Boolean expression. It's, it returns a true or a false. It's going to return a true anytime the order date is equal to the minimum order date or the first date in the uh, uh, in the overall data set. And I set that up here and filter it that I set it equal to true. Now we can add to that a series of dimensions and we can find out what happened on that date. We know what the date is. Uh, it's January 3rd, 2020. And if we come back, we can, we can add the category. We can add the subcategory. We can add the customer who bought on that date. We can add the order ID. We can, we can find out what he purchased on that date. So if you had this condition where, hey, I need to know what was purchased, uh, what our first purchase was, and who bought it and when when they bought it and what they bought and how much it was, this is the way you could go about doing it using uh, using the min order date as a filter. And we can see here, this was uh, Office Supplies by, and this uh, customer, Darren Powers, uh, was the one that actually bought, uh, bought the product on that day. I could also take a look at a different level. We can take a look at the min order date by category. Let's take a look at what that expression looks like. It's just an LOD expression. It's a fixed category, the minimum order date. So for each category, now I know what the minimum order date is. And if we were to take a look at the min order date by category, and that's this column right here, we can see in furnitures, it was January 6th. In office supplies, it was the third. And in uh, technology, it was the sixth also. And then I can create that same type of Boolean filter and set the order date to the min uh, for sales by category. And it's going to return a true each time the order date equals the minimum order in a category. And we can apply that here as a true false and, a, and as true. We can identify by category now what was the subcategory the customer name, the ID, the product, or any other combination that you would want. So if you're faced with a situation where you needed to know what was the first order by a product or by a product category or by a product subcategory, this is the way you would go about doing it. And you know what the first order date was and you know what the value was. And you can use that to compare uh, compare to current sales or compare to your uh, uh, overall sales or the average of your overall sales or, or uh, any other combination that you would so choose. So you can see we can use LOD expressions to find the min or the max or the first or the last. Well, what's something else we can do with uh, LOD expressions? One of the things we can do is we can create custom bins. Uh, maybe you're familiar with using binning and using bins and the default binning calculate bins that are all the same size, but you might not want that. You might want bins that are custom to something that you're doing. You, you have uh, specific reasons for calculating bins that are different sizes. Well, LOD expressions are great at doing that. Now let's take a look at how that might be done. Here, we'll start 
by creating an expression. And I want to look for each order, for each order ID, if the in if the sum of sales is less than 500, I'm going to call this 0 to 500, OK? Else if, and we learned before when we looked at conditional statements when we, a, couple, a couple of lessons ago, we learned uh, what the syntax for conditional statement was. You know, if, if the sales are greater than 500, then we're going to go to this ex expression. We'll take a look. Else if the sales are less than 1,000, they're in a bin. I'm going to create a bin called 500 to 1,000. And if they're greater than that, else if, if they're less than 2,000, then I've got a bin for 1,000 to 2,000, and then another for two to three, and another bin. Now we're going three to five. And then I want to take everything over 5,000 and dump it into a last bin greater than 5,000. And when I do that, you can see it's a fixed LOD expression. You can see that that is created as a dimension. And I can take that dimension and I can use it just like a binning expression. I can drop it on columns. And I've got my bins here, 0 to 5, five 500 to 1, uh, 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000, 2 to 3,000, 3 to 5,000, and greater than 5,000. And there I've dropped the sales on. Okay, now we come to this last topic uh, with uh, LOD expressions, or at least the last we're going to cover today, because there's so many things you can do with LOD expressions. And this is one of my favorite. Uh, I love to use LOD expressions to calculate date metrics. You know, things like year over year, month over month type calculations, year to date calculations, year to date versus prior year cal calculations, that sort of thing. Let's take a look and see how that was done, how that would be done. First, we're going to take a look at a uh, very simple, straightforward year-to-date calcu uh, calculations. I want to take a look at the current year sales, and we're going to go through the piece in a little bit of detail. Uh, if you remember in the last session, we talked about date functions and how date functions work. If, if you need a refresher, just go back to the last session. Uh, we covered the same calculation there, but we'll go through it here uh, today also. What I want to do is I want to determine if the year of the order date, and I do that with date trunk, the date, if the date trunk year of the order date is the same as the date trunk year of today. So it's in the same year. And the date trunk day of the order date is less than or equal to the date trunk day of today than sales. Okay, so it's going to give us all the sales for the current year up to this date. And I'm recording this on uh, November 26, 2023. So that's all the sales up to that date. We can take a look at the prior year sales using a very similar calculation. Oh, I'm sorry. This one here. In a very similar calculation, the only, well, the only change I've made in this calculation is we're looking at the year of the order date equal to the prior year. And this right here, this date add, is going to take today's date and take one year from it. So I'm looking at last year, same date last year. And then again, I use the same thing in the day of the order date. Last year's comparable date, the year of the day. And I record those sales. So I've got uh, the current year and the prior year. And then all we do is we take the difference between those two values. And we calculate the difference by taking the uh, prior year sales minus the current or the current year sales minus the prior year sales, and then we can take the percent difference on that to calculate the, the growth or the variance, whatever term you would choose to use. And uh, we divide by the prior year sales and we get 26.4. We might be saying to yourself, well, why, why go about doing that? Because I can do that. Uh, I don't need uh, an LOD to do it. I can do that with a table calculation, or I can do that with something else. Well, these values, these LOD expressions are entirely portable. I can put them on a summary table, or I can put them anywhere, or I can use them in other calculations also. This is an additional example. Let's take a look at, uh, if we took a look at the category level, we wanted to come in here and look at the category level. I could have those same expressions. So we've got the category level order date. And the only thing I've done here is I've taken that fixed LOD expression instead of having fixed, so it's fixed overall, over all the data. I'm fixed at the category. So I'm going to have three values here for the category level. 
for this this year and three values for the prior year at the category level. Same expression as we used before. The only thing I've done is I've, I've added category into my LOD expression. And then I take the difference of those and then I take the percent difference of those and you can see that I've got the differences and I've got the percent at the category level. We could easily take category out of this and we come back to the same values we just looked at because we're calculating the total at different levels and we're aggregating the total as we as we go up that hierarchy up to a higher, up to a higher level. One additional thing I want to show you and this is something that we uh, looked at before when we were looking at uh, you know percent of total calculations. We can use a fixed LOD to calculate our percent of total. Right. Our fixed category level is just fixed category, the sum of sales. And we can calculate our percent of total as the the sum of sales, and here we're looking at region and category, okay? The sum of sales, so the sum of this value divided by the fixed category sum of sales, and this is the fixed category sum of sales, it's seven, seven, 754,000. So we're looking at this value divided by that value, we're gonna return that value that we see there. And we can see it by region and by category. Now, it's kind of important to understand what happens when we filter and how we filter uh, using LOD expressions. If you think back of what we learned in uh, several lessons ago, we talked about the order of operation and when filters are applied. Filters applied in context, and those are gray fills, are applied before the LOD is calculated. So we're applying the filter before this fixed number is calculated. Okay, and I've got a filter here on segment and I can take out the segment. I'm gonna take out the consumer segment and we're gonna apply that filter before the, uh, the LOD is calculated. So we're gonna see this number change. That 754 is gonna to change to a value of 360 because we took out the consumer segment. And now that's 700 and uh, or that 77,000 divided by the 360 number is uh, going to be 21% uh, of sales. Remember again, we talked about using a dimension filter, which is a blue filter. The dimension filters are applied after the LOD is calculated. So I want to go back. We're just going to do this. And uh, we are going to apply the same filter. I'm going to apply the consumer filter after the LOD is calculated, okay? Segment is no longer in context. So this number, the 754, will not change, will not change when I apply the filter. So I apply the filter, the consumer, and you can see the 754 did not change, 77 did change. And now that uh, 77,000 is 10%, not 20%, but seven, uh, 10%, of the uh, category fixed number of 754,000. Very often we'll get people say, I want a calculation that ignores the filter. There is no calculation that ignores the filter. You decide as a designer when you want to apply the filter. And you either apply the filter before the LOD is calculated or after the LOD is calculated. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, this information is already out on my blog. You can go out to my blog at uh, jimdaner.com. You, uh, you can see it out there. And uh, you can also download a uh, workbook with this information or other information about LOD exper expressions out on, my, uh, out on my profile. Also on my blog, I've got several different uh, posts on LOD expressions. If you just search LOD in the search field, all of them will come up and you can have your choice. Looking forward to seeing you next time um, where we're going to talk about, um, sure we are, we're going to talk about table calculations in the next session. Until then, good being with you today. Bye now.